cool. What's up? It's Joe up interviews with the Squat Got Podcast, and I'm joined today by Raymond Chapa from the On Call Podcast. We've been on what, Raymond, like a three month break or something like that? Yeah, like three, three, four months. Yeah, there's an episode of Seinfeld where they get mad when somebody says Happy New Year, you know, in March. So Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, we're just coming around. Um, damn, dude, I miss Seinfeld. I still watch it. I read that Netflix picked up the uh, picked up the the rights to it. They're gonna start showing it because they lost, you know, the office. What would really be good is if they completely dropped uh, like the old episodes and like got uh, what's his face back for like another season. Jerry's you talking about? Oh, Steve Carell. No, no, I'm not talking about The Office. I'm talking about Seinfeld. Oh. Like, uh, like oh, they brought like Seinfeld back. Back, yeah. But uh, are, is it? Yeah. What's his face dead? Nobody's dead. Nobody's dead. They're all alive. Yeah, George, uh, Jason Alexander's Did- alive. He's George- on uh, some TV show. Elaine, she was on Veep and beat cancer. How crazy and- would that? But it'd be like it would be like a boomer show though. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, oh yeah, I sound Canadian. Or like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, I mean, I don't give a fuck. People, a lot of people talk shit about Seinfeld, especially our people, our Hispanic people. They hate that shit. But I've always, I've always fucked with Seinfeld. I've never heard that before. Why? I don't know. They just say it's, I always hear, oh, that's a white people show. That's how I feel about Frasier, but. Like, you must be hanging out, like, with some pretty, like, barrio (laughs) people, dude. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know me i hang out with the essays dude i i grew up between 35 and nogalitos on the south side and i've never heard that before so you you, you must be pretty hood dude i can't hang no i'm not hood it's just every time i've asked anybody like oh do you or do you watch seinfeld they're like ah oh, no that's like white people shit so, no, nah, you're oh. right. I'm giving you too much credit. That headband says suburbia, dude. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Teen- it's oh, it's a huh? oh, it's a beanie. I thought you were wearing a sweatband. No, there. Hold on. Do I look? Do I look gangster now? Nah, dude. I like the sweatband better. Oh, okay. Hold on. <laughs> sweatband mode. There you go. There we go. There now, we go. now you're ready to work out with some tube socks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> So what's up, man? What you been up to? Nothing much. Dude. I thought about you the other day because, like, I was scrolling through Netflix, and I've seen a couple of good things on Netflix lately. But the one that brought you to mind specifically was the last blockbuster. Yes, I I had saved that because I'd been following it. I've been following the last blockbuster since they put an Instagram out through the VHS community. And then I saw that they started um, they started putting out like previews, and I saw that Doug Benson visited the set of the documentary, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Doug, like, Doug Benson, remind me who that is. Uh, he made that movie Super High Me. Oh, oh it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like you know, instead of the thirty days on McDonald's, he did thirty days not smoking weed, then he did thirty days of nonstop smoking weed, and he's like a stand up. It was funny, but that dude's like in his mid to late fifties. And he's like a big time weed head. He's got a bunch of podcasts, but yeah, that documentary was good, man. That's another uh, thing I've been binging lately is like, uh, fucking weed shows like weeds disjointed was fucking awesome. Disjointed. Is that the one with Kathy Bates? Yes, dude. Kathy Bates. And like, she plays like a, like a marijuana activist slash lawyer slash dispensary owner. Yes. I've seen that one because the security guard, he's like, got, he's got, uh something what is it uh uh ptsd from the war or something right like that. and yeah he and has these smoking. visions yeah. yes dude those vi- their animations his vision or like his like reflections are animated in the show and it's yes. like dude it's like psychedelic it's like it's not marijuana you know it's like a psychedelic thing and he's obviously yeah. not doing psychedelics but it's still like uh 
I don't know, but the but the but the animations or the visions like are yeah. very are very reflective of the kinds of thoughts and reflections that you have on marijuana. And so when I saw it, I was like, man, I was like, it took me back to my days, like back in the day, and I was like, this is this is it, like this is, <laughs> and so that like I was hooked. Shit, yeah, that kind of shit. Like I'm I'm sad that they didn't make more of those, but the disjointed. But yeah, that reminds me of doing like. A lot of edibles. Oh my god, I went on an edible rampage back in the day. <sighs> Was it back in the day? Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> yeah, like last year. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, employer, like daughter, child, wife. I don't have an employer right now, so fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, I, I don't have an employer, but I, spe- speaking of speaking of uh, of uh, making it without an employer, did you see that uh, that meme with Joe Biden about the stim- stimulus checks? Man, there's been so many, dude. Was, so many. The one I'm talking, he's wearing like glasses. He looks like a cool guy, and he's like licking like a like an ice cream cone. Like you've seen that picture before, right? And it's real. Yeah, per- yeah. It, and it, he's like licking it really pervy, and it says, uh, <laughs> "It's just uh, check your bank account, baby girl." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I keep seeing like, there's all these new the the video memes or whatever of him like falling up the stairs. I was just like, oh man. Oh yeah, or like where like Mario uh, Mario Kart's dropping banana peels yeah. and he's falling <laughs> down. The... When was that video yeah. taken? Did he really fall recently? I don't know, dude. He's like a hundred, so probably. Yeah, he's... it's almost like it's not fun to make fun of him for being like old and incapable because everybody knows he's like the oldest president. Dude, it's like, like what are you gonna do? I, I voted for him, but I, yeah, he's. When people say, oh, the, the best of both evils type shit, it's like the best whatever. of both evils. I love it, dude. No, you, I know that, you like, I know you misspoke. I know you meant to say uh uh the, oh, the uh best, the, the lesser of, the lesser the of, lesser of two, two evils. evils. <laughs> but think about that. I <laughs> like it. Evil. The best of both evils. Give me that That's shit. I, Give me that shit. Uh, <laughs> it's true though. I mean He's already what bombed Syria. He's already, he's, he's well, doing what to his credit. What those every, wars were already active. But he's doing what every other president, be it Bernie, Biden, fucking Trump, like whoever, he's he's just doing exactly what they would do. All all the all presidents like people always say like oh well George W. Bush. The way he reacted to, I don't, let me say something. I don't like how everybody loves George W. Bush now. Cause he was like, to me, he was worse than Trump. I don't know. Maybe it was just because that was when I first was getting into politics, but I don't know. What's, people are always. People, but, no, people are always what? Like Ellen, she's like friends with George W. Bush now. And all these celebrities are like praising him for putting out artwork of soldiers that are wounded. It's like man you're making you're making fucking art out of people you blew up <laughs> like, i don't know yeah you know like it's that old saying there's two sayings right uh one of them is familiarity breeds contempt but there's like one that means the exact opposite and it's like how is it that both are wisdom what is that one uh uh familiarity breeds contempt and uh, uh distance it makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah, right? I was going to say, I know there's a book called Distance Makes the Heart Grow Fonder. Yeah, so how the fuck are both, like, supposed to be considered, like, wisdom, you know, meme, you know, like, I don't know, like, wisdom spoken. It's like, oh, you know, uh, truth has a ring to it or it just sounds wise. And it's like, you listen to both, like, to both, and they mean the exact opposite. But because it's like a saying, like, they're supposed to be true and wise, it's like, no, like, there's yeah. tr- truth in both instances. And with the George Bush thing, I think probably that's what's going on. It's like time and distance has made people forget, forget how much they hated him. Or I, also, yeah. fucking Trump is, it was, was in cer- some ways, like, further to the right. You know, way further to the right, but like 
George W. Bush and his daddy, they had three wars under their belts that we know of. Mm. They both refused to vote for him and they refused to like, you know, be a part of, you know, him winning. They spoke out about him and shit. But even though to me, I'm just like, man, you know, you voted for him. You're Republicans like you did. It's a cult of personality. And my problem with when people like vote their conscience or vote their heart, it's like they're not thinking about it. They're not taking like it's never going to it's never going to change. You and me are going to be Biden's age and shit's still going to be operating the same. Yep. You know, like so, yeah, you know, lesser of two evils. But like you're naive if you think anything is ever going to change. Like, no. It's, you know, it'll change people, once and then that's going to be like our fall of Rome. Well, that's that's what Obama was trying to do, you know, and it didn't happen. Like it all got reversed. Everything that he tried to do and the little that he did do. I mean, but now I don't know. Biden's in office and he's old doing doing the thing, I guess. Doing old <laughs> shit. <laughs> old doing, doing old, old people sh- shit. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, speaking of old people in movies, like we talked about it last time with that uh, gang that gangster movie with Joe Pesci and uh, oh fucking um, the Irishman. Uh, casino? No, the Irishman. Oh, the Irishman. Yeah. yeah. So so the whole time I was watching that movie, like I could not get because I saw like how f- they were trying like they were trying to make themselves look younger than they were. They were absolutely decrepit. You could see like the makeup caked on their face, right? Oh yeah. And the whole and the way they're walking, it's like they're like they have this it's like, like a video game. Yeah. They, this penguin walk. They're waddling the whole time, and the whole time, like I could not get out of my head like the idea that the set the uh, that the movie set smelled like nursing home. <laughs> did you i had the dude. smell in my fucking nose dude did you see like all together those guys they're like i know i know uh de niro's in his 80s yeah his i think his early 80s uh scorsese he does he's in his mid to late 80s you know pacino i think he's a little bit younger than de niro and then I I can't even I think the youngest person in that movie was not in it very long. It was Sebastian Maniscalco, the stand up comedian. He had like a little bit part in there. Mm. But I just always go back to because I saw like uh, on set pictures before I watched the movie. And it was like De Niro wearing these platform shoes that were about that big. Mm hmm. And he was just walking around in those things, I guess, to be the same height as everybody else or a little taller. But I just kept seeing that. I was like, this goofy. Oh bastard. yeah, like what the what was the deal with the platform shoes? I don't know. They they can't like put a fucking they're not walking and talking a lot in that movie. I don't know. They can't put them on a fucking little pedestal or a little stoop. You have to put shoes on them. It was just funny. It's like, may, eh. may, maybe they knew so maybe they were trying to throw it back to the seventies. That's what I'm thinking. It's like, you maybe. know, because everybody was wearing platform shoes back then. Or maybe they just remember the seventies differently. I don't know. I don't know. They, they would be the ones because they were old men in the 70s. So, yeah, you know, was... that's crazy to think of that. Do you remember how long ago did you watch that movie? Oh, like two when years ago. Out? Yeah. Two, three years ago. Yeah. I watched it when it came out and I think wifey crashed out like maybe an hour into it. Yeah. It was like, like a four a, hour like movie. Normal person. Yeah. yeah. I watched the whole thing. I was just like, oh, fuck it. I'm not going to get much sleep. I remember tomorrow. you saying that, that you watched the whole thing. Yeah, it was it was it was okay. Scorsese, I don't know why he made it so long, but yeah, it was all right. Was yeah, all right. Uh, I liked. Uh, did you see the original Hoffa with uh, uh, Jack Nicholson? Joe Pesci directed it. No, nah. pretty good. It's pretty good. They bash on. Uh, they had a big beef with uh, the Kennedys. I was uh, listening to this uh, podcast. It was like some kind of conspiracy theory that. Um, Supposedly, Bobby Kennedy had Hoffa killed. Oh, well, that would make sense, I guess, right? Yeah. I, I can't remember the the details of it, but I just remember hearing about that, and I started reading stuff about it. But then I was like, man, it's getting a little nuts. They're like, oh, because um, they had information about him and Marilyn Monroe, and they had her killed as well, and the Kennedys. I was just like, I don't know. 
But you know what? That sells conspiracy documentaries. When you just mix everything together, like it was like yeah. Kennedy, the aliens, fucking Bigfoot and Marilyn Monroe. And it's like, and if you know how to like sell well, it, like it sounds brilliant. Well, like if you look at the actual autopsy of Marilyn Monroe, they said that she died of a drug overdose, but they said that all the tablets that were in her system all of the pills that she had in her system, they were all gel caps and none of them had dissolved yet. And they said that supposedly, like, um, I guess it was um, somebody, like a housekeeper, admitted after, way after the fact when she died that she got there before the police and everybody with her lawyer, I think. Mm. And they cleaned up the whole room. Like, they cleaned up the room. They got rid of a bunch of shit. So, I, but I, I heard a, a story that kind of plays into that, like a conspiracy theory. Uh, saying something along the lines of how there's there's uh, like a cabal or like a secret organization of coroners and the coroners like have like this uh, alleged secret society where you know they'll call a death whatever they want to whenever you know people in the cabal need it so like if you're a coroner and i'm a coroner you know like we write off deaths for for people in positions of power for favors but you know if we ever get into like you know a dwi or uh accidentally r kill somebody or you know want to go fuck little kids or something like that like those people in power will you know like they're in other words they're in it with like Jeffrey they Epstein kind of, and they kind of ha they have some kind of Illuminati death race card that gets him out of jail. Yeah, like I can't remember where I heard that, and I'm sure somebody is like gonna hear this one day and be like, "Oh, yeah, that's this theory." I can't think of it, but yeah, and it would it would make sense because if you organize a group of coroners or a large majority of coroners, that would be a really popular or I mean a really powerful organization. Yeah, I mean. Should make a movie about that. Fuck yeah, it. dude. Let's like, uh, watch that. what's that movie where like the people that freeze time like and correct history with Back uh, to the Future? No, no. Like it's like <laughs> they're like Men in Black. They're like Men in Black. They that pause time and then like go and like you know put move somebody like two feet further in front of a bus or something like that. Well, man, that reminds me of that. Did you ever see that movie uh, with or that? show on hulu with james franco where he's uh it's called like some it was like tr him trying to stop the assassination of john f kennedy it's like 11 22 63 or something like that mm. he goes back much, in time to stop it yeah so he find he goes to this diner and he finds out when you go into this closet of the diner you go back to however long before jfk dies but every time he goes in to the time machine he loses 10 years of his life mm. So whenever he comes out, he's older, and the guy was going in it before him owned the diner, and he looked like old as shit, and he, I think he ends up dying in the first episode. And they just keep on trying and can't? Yeah, the endings, endings, because there was a few different endings. Mm -hmm. It was kind of, that kind of threw me off. And Time travel got, movies, paradox. Yeah, yeah, but then they kind of got into too much of a love story for me. I was just like, man, don't do that. But they got into it, like, about the conspiracy theory side of it and all that. But it was good at the time I watched it. I haven't seen it since, but it was good. So, so let's talk about you got you got me going on the conspiracy theory stuff. That's such a fucking high, dude. No wonder like people go crazy. Like their life, like I was thinking about this the other day. People like with shitty lives. Maybe their kids are on drugs or hate them. Like they're they they have a shitty personality, so nobody likes to hang out with them. Um, you know, and then they're like, they're kind of have a natural predilection towards conspiracy theories. And so like that whole like combination of things could make somebody go crazy. You know what I mean? You almost have to like check yourself when you're like looking into this stuff. Cause like you could really fall yeah. down a hole, man. Well, just man. Um, so there's all these people saying that Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg are like serial rapists of little kids. And mur they murder little kids. They they drink their blood to be fucking to have to be immortal. The, like the I, adrenochrome like and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this kid who put out this video, um, and he ended up taking his own life. I think he filmed it. But on the video, he's saying like, "Oh yeah, 
Tom Hanks did this with this person and Steven Spielberg did this and everybody is taking his word for it. But he was best friends with one of Michael Jackson's kids, Paris, Paris Jackson, I think is her name. Mm -hmm. And he was so fucked up on like, I think he was a meth head. He was like doing a bunch of uppers that he tried to like kill her. And he was saying all this shit and got arrested. And there was all these incidents before he made that video and killed himself of him losing his mind on drugs. And then he's like, I'm going to just tell all this, the secrets. And he did a couple TV shows and he had like a bit part in that movie. Fanboys. Have you seen? Fanboys? I haven't seen fanboys. Yeah. Uh, no. Pretty good, but he wasn't even a big actor, and they're taking everything he says like sounds like, like an upgrade. So, 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 sounds like an upgraded version to Brokeback Mountain. Yeah. <laughs> did I get Did I get it on the first try? Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, like I was reading about it because I was like, man, because people, all these people were saying that Tom Hanks did this and did that, and I was just like, man, like I think that was when Trump was first elected. All these. People are coming out like with all these sex crimes and not to say that none of them are true, but I was just like, man, oh, like, and like Trump was in the background trying to like slam them and get them out of the, no, no, it's like, it's like this. It's like, yeah, this. it's like, what is that called? A, uh, Bukaki <laughs> when he's dancing though, on see, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. But yeah, I don't know, man. Like. Whatever helps you sleep at night. I just, I don't know. That one was a little too far gone for me. I was just kind of like, eh, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Po- podcast. Seen, heard, heard or seen any good podcasts lately? Yes. I've been listening to Autopsy. It's, uh, it's like the autopsy of celebrities. Like they just did um, Lou Reed. and Lou Reed. Yeah, it's a uh, Reels R E E L Z. They have like a channel as well, but they put out a podcast. I've been listening to that one, and let me bring it up real quick. <clears throat> and so they just interview like uh, like celebrities and talk to them. And Celeb- stuff? They, they interview like mostly family members, doctors, psychiatrists, um, people who were like actually in their lives. Um, American Nightmare. Been listening to that one, which is another true crime one. And I started getting into Sword and Scale, but I had to put it down because that one is, it's like a little bit too real for me. Cause it's, it's also crime? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sword and Scale is like about crimes you don't really know about, like just normal everyday people. Like I think there was one of a guy on a bus that decapitated somebody and he started just killing people with like a machete. Mm-hmm. It's just stuff like that that you don't really hear about. I mean, maybe if you lived in that area area. you would hear about it but i was just like fuck after like maybe 10 episodes i was like i can't i can't do this anymore (laughs) yeah dude some of those shows like really take you out yeah yeah and you're like fucking dreaming of that shit at night and it's like oh my god i gotta stop (laughs) that's i swear since i stopped listening to those like i'll still listen to the autopsy ones because most of them but because those are sounds stupid because those are celebrities so in my head that's not real so i don't know whatever but regular people like some i was just like man this was like a little town and there was one in san antonio too i don't remember i I think i got like a quarter of the way into that one i was like "Ah, i can't do that some years ago over there on like cherry like by cherry ridge and 410 vance jackson that area it was on the news there was a there was a mother that like had a schizophrenic episode and she ate her baby's face off. Yeah. Do you hear about that? Yeah. I remember in live Oak, something happened when I was a teenager. It was, uh, I think a husband or no, not a husband. I think it was like the kid that was living in the house. He murdered somebody and he like, there was like a high speed chase for through a couple States. But I remember when that happened, it wasn't too far from where my wife and I got married I was just like, holy shit. I was like, yeah, so all that stuff hits home. If you if you start researching it. Ugh, yeah, it's, it's tough. Uh, like, uh, and I want to stay on podcast, but just for a second, like speaking of gory stuff, you know, uh, Ed, uh, I can't think of his last name. Ed's manifesto. Uh, Joe Rogan's interviewed him. He is like a narco cop. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think Ed, I remember that one. Calderon, I think Calderon. 
Yeah, Joey Diaz had him on too. Yeah. Fucking Joey Diaz, dude. I love Joey I love Diaz. <laughs> but uh so Ed Calderon, like I was looking at his his Instagram page and like there was this little link in the bio. I don't even think it's there anymore. But it was a, a Telegram link. You know the app Telegram? Yeah. So so I clicked on it and it's his room. He has a room in Telegram where he posts stuff that he can't post on Instagram because it's so fucking graphic, right? It's like it's like the American uh narco blog, right? But 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 like from a famous person. So I started looking at it like I shouldn't even be mentioning it. It's like I mean it makes faces of death look like a fucking Disney movie, dude. I saw I saw a couple emails with a bunch of pictures of like people's heads cut off and like intestines and right and we body shouldn't parts stacked up yeah like like, uh, like we shouldn't go too much into detail but I mean it was like graphic video of the process of people doing shit that you haven't even like tried to imagine to other people it's horrible yeah. so yeah. anyway so like I like scroll through it and like i was transfixed like i didn't want to watch it because it was horrible but like you already got too deep you were right deep. you couldn't stop and i was like and at some point like i was like all right this, this is enough like i gotta stop like i'm gonna fucking make myself go crazy you play but, that game with yourself like okay in five minutes yeah yeah just okay, this next it's video 11, it's 11 12 on the dot right now okay at 11 15 i have to stop yeah but i give myself your- maybe six minutes and you look at your watch, oh, fuck, it's 2 a.m. Like, okay, yeah. I got to stop for real. At 2.05, it's going to stop. That exact thing happened. I was, like, in bed, and I was like, oh, shit, it's been three hours. Yeah. Yeah, fucked up shit, man. So, I mean, you could take it in a dose, but, yeah, it's not cool. Um, um So, I've been listening to the True Crime Podcast. Yeah. Um, I listen to – I haven't listened to much of the regular ones that I listen to. I've been kind of falling off on those just – I don't know. Exploring. Like the, yeah, because the comedy ones are good, but I'm just kind of, I think I'm burned out on them. But speaking I'll, of, I'll speaking of the comedy ones, did you see uh flagrant with Oshkosh Singh and, uh, and, and, uh, Andrew Schultz and, uh, fucking Alex Jones. No, I th- wait. It was with Alex Jones. Yeah, they inter- they interviewed Alex. So flagrant is Ashka Singh's. I think I'm pronouncing his name wrong. Uh, Ashka, he's the Indian guy that hangs out with Andrew Schultz a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know <clears throat> what you're talking about. Yes. Right. So yeah, they yeah. they were interviewing Alex Jones, and he was on this podcast called Flagrant, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, you look at the the background. It's all Miami Vice slash uh, Grand Theft Auto. Right? It's a really cool like setup, the studio for flagrant. And then Fla- those, fucking, those those chill pinks and stuff like that. Right, Just- yeah, flamingos and all that shit, right? Yeah. And they're dressed that way. You know, they're dressed like Miami <laughs> Vice, right? So, Andrew Schultz, really? Yeah, dude, he's dressed like that. Like it was cool, right? So so they interview Alex Jones, and you Alex Jones is like this conservative, hardcore, right? <sighs> yeah. So I think, right, because I walked away. Like, like, I don't believe in like 90%, it like, I'll say like 70%, 80% 70, of the stuff that Alex, not that I don't believe in it, but he, I don't know how to explain it. He's a, he's a difficult character to cap encapsulate. I believe he puts on, I don't think he believes a lot of the shit he says. I, I lost respect for him whenever he started claiming the Sandy Hook thing was fake. Well, he backtracked on that too. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I, the fact that you would say that it's like, oh these people are um what did he call them uh, dramatic actors who are doing the interviews like anyways but yeah alex jones i'm not a big fan of his at all i think but i do think he doesn't believe any of the shit that he says i think he's just talking out of his ass as a persona well just- you see that in that episode that's why this one episode was so brilliant because i was like you know what if alex jones had been doing comedy i shit you not comedy instead of politics this whole time like he would have been like maybe not as controversial but like i like him more doing comedy yeah, like because he's you know like, it's just satire it's just bullshit right, it's right. like david cross it's like something david cross would do or yeah, some, yeah, or yeah. One of, some a stand-up like that or what's his face um the fucking old guy with the beard that's always cussing 
That's like half the comics. Uh, oh, you mean um, Ron White? No, older. Uh, our childhood. I can't think of the guy. It looks like Willie Nelson. Oh, shit. I Not can't. Bill I, Hicks. No, no, Is no. he dead? Is he dead? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he died some, some years ago. But anyway, like... Yeah, I, I I get the I get the kind of portrait you're trying to paint, like assholes. But you know, when they come out in that context, it's okay, right? And so, yeah. so he's being an asshole, but he was also telling like Ashka Singh, like, like he was waving like a machete and be like, ah, death to America, like the infidels or whatever, which oh, would be yeah. offensive if he said it on his show. But in this context. Like, he had just finished telling Ashka Singh to sit on his lap. And he was like, come here, big boy. And Ashka Singh, this, like, Indian dude, is, like, sitting on Alex Jones's lap. And he's like, oh, my God, this is so uncomfortable. And he's like, come here, big boy. Sit on my lap. Oh and, my like, God. so, like, he's an asshole. But, like, in that context, it was brilliant, man. Yeah, he's just putting on a show he's I mean, supposed I to do that. that he's supposed to yeah. do, he's supposed to be a comedian and I, if you had told me that without me seeing that i'd be like i don't know dude alex jones in comedy no way dude the dude's a comic genius dude yeah i mean i was listening to this thing on npr about him just talking about the sandy hook stuff again and then it was talking about like they interviewed him supposed- uh, no, yeah, they interviewed him, but mm. he was talking about a supposed fight that happened in high school. High school, I yeah, I heard that episode. Yeah, it's really suppose- sad. Yeah, yeah, but I was just I was listening to that. I was just like, it makes you feel you know, bad. And it's NPR. Yeah, so it's obviously they're bashing on Alex Jones because it's a fucking liberal station. But right. I was just listening to it, and I was just like, holy shit! But it was like a combination of a bunch of different interviews and and. Um, like stories they did around and about Alex Jones. Like they did one of a person that he supposedly beat up and it was a completely different story. Like I was just, yeah, it's kind of, who they do you kinda, believe? They kind of proved, well, kind of proved that he was like basically a liar and a bully in high school. Yeah. yeah. Cause he was trying to make himself out to be some kind of like hero for beating these people up in his life but it turns out no he was just a prick who got in a fight because he was drunk or he was a prick and just picking on somebody at school and he ended up beating the shit out of him and like putting him in the hospital but he also sounded a little bit like a nerd because he would like he would run up apparently according to these stories he would run up and down the hallways in his high school and like make these alex jones faces to people and be like i'm fucking satan and stuff like that yeah (laughs) it's like all right calm down bro like not jock not jock bully like like nerd bully yeah, I think yeah. he was just – yeah, I think – I don't know. In high school, I didn't go to high school much, so the little I did go to was <laughs> not very good. I think I got to freshman year, and then I was done. <laughs> Fuck it, dude. Start, yeah. Started freshman year. Now we're here. <laughs> yeah. I started and finished in freshman year and walking out. That's it. But yeah, yeah. You, you, you should just tell people, you know what? Nah, dude, I was done with high school uh, freshman year. Like I like I like or how old, however old you are at that age, 14, when I was 15. I walked. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was done with high school when I was 15. <laughs> yeah, I was too. They're like, oh, man, you're smart. Like, Be like yeah, think what they want to think. Yeah, <laughs> I'm fucking brilliant. I jumped around from Christian school to Christian school my whole life. So I was like, hmm. Once I got my choice, I was I was done. You'd be like, well, you know, like I I still hung out after after I was done with high school, but that was just for the girls. I still I still went to the parties. I didn't get any of the girls, but I still went to the parties. <laughs> the high school up? parties. <laughs> um, when did you? Uh, when were you done with women? Like other women? Like when did you get married? Are y'all married? Uh, yeah, we're married. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, we got married in 2018. How old were y'all? About roundabouts. Uh, so I was, I'm 35. So I was like 32. Yeah, I was 32. My wife was 25. Oh, so you so, weren't married that long ago. No, I, I never had like girlfriends. I never had girlfriends growing up or had like a, any cert, diff, relationships with girls. I didn't have them growing up. I was, I started working full time at 16 and. I didn't really. I just didn't do that. I guess. I saw. I saw your wedding photos, but I thought it was like an anniversary. I thought y'all had been married like 
But y'all had just been together for a long time. Yeah, right. so we've been together since 2017. Then we got mm -hmm. married in 2018. So oh, okay. we've been together four years. Yeah, four years. And we've been married three, over three. Right on, man. Yeah. But yeah, it's, we're, yeah, we met each other and we just, I don't know if we moved fast, but I guess so. But, but yeah, yeah it was worth it. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think having a podcast together probably like, I don't know, like it encourages communication in a in a unique and honest way. Because when you're talking like this, you know somebody's gonna listen to it later, and it's like, all right, do I really want to be judged in that way? You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. It fo forces some communication to come out. I've thought about like, bringing Martha on, but I was like, I don't you know. should, man, because I feel like she's a mystery person. <laughs> I have no idea who she is. <laughs> uh, no. Like her and I, we tell each other everything. We don't have secrets. We talk about everything. We, uh, even when we're mad at each other, we, I think the communication is key for the most part. That sounds unique, With, man. For, that sounds like for, what a special relationship. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, I love her. We're married. <laughs> so it's not, we didn't get, we got pregnant before we got married, but we were talking about getting married before we got pregnant, but. So I mean, it's almost like it doesn't count. <laughs> no, I mean. 1950s we, rules. Yeah. But no, it was. Yeah, I never I never knew. I never I kind of when I met her right before I met her, I was living at my parents house, just kind of working, trying to fix my credit from a house that I lost. Saving money or trying to save money, just doing a lot of drugs, going to work. And I met her. Well, we had met before, but we started talking and we started getting serious and I had just gotten to the point where I was okay with being single and not having kids for the rest of my life. I was like kind of learning how to be that person. I already was, but I was just like, okay, well this is going to be the rest of my life. Just me. And then we started talking and I knew from the beginning, like, okay, I think if, if anything, we're going to be really good friends for the rest of our lives. You know, at that time I was just like, that's how I felt. And then, we we have a kid and living together, man. Married. I, I have a feeling like this kind of conversation is what what women want to hear. Like if we're sitting around talking about relationships, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Which I mean, is, I'm just being honest. Yeah. But have you almost... ever have you ever thought about having like a like a female like relationship counselor on the show or anything? Uh, no, I would though. Right, just I haven't to, either. <laughs> just to pick my brain, maybe, or pick our brains or something. Yeah, I mean, I want to, I, I have thought about getting a psychic. I want to get a psychic on the podcast. I think that would be dope. Dude, what if a psychic called you and she was like, I think you're going to want me on your podcast? I would say, I think this is a sign that we, you should be on the podcast and you would definitely be on it. You would co-host that bitch. Or somebody that listened to this episode goes and gets a psychic to call you. <laughs> hey, if hey, any any of my three listeners and Joel's hundreds of thousands of listeners, Whatever it is. bring, bring, bring Four. it on, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a, actually like, so psychic's a good idea. Um I know of one that, but I don't know. I don't know if he, like he's like a kind of like a recluse. He like has his business on Flores Street. His name's Mateo. We should look into it. But uh, I, I, dude, if he did it a Skype, you know, I throw him a couple shekels, throw him the, a couple bucks. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's this. I was like, I had this idea, right? And it's like I'm not precious with ideas. I'm not like, oh, I'm gonna keep it secret because everybody's got ideas. Nobody ends up. Like, but everybody's got good ideas, but not everybody ends up in front of a camera in a podcasting studio actually fucking doing it like you and I are right now. You know yeah. what I mean? Regardless of whether it could become something or not, you know, the, the, I think the line between idea and do and action is like a big line to cross for a lot of I people. I think so too. It's like, uh, and so for that, we should give ourselves a pat on the back, but like, yeah, but <laughs> Real quick, I, I so I had this idea. I was like, you know, professors at like SAC and UTSA are in abundance. Like, why don't we start reaching out to them, right? So I had this idea at work, and I was like, you know what? Let me go to ratemyprofessor.com, 
right? Oh shit! Right, so I went the wor- to let's get the worst rated professor. Bring oh, him on. dude, no, that would be a terribly <laughs> weird idea. But I, I actually looked at the highest rated professors. First, I looked in general, and then I started looking at subjects, right? Like, who's right. the highest rated physics professor at UTSA, right? And I was hoping, like, to get, like, somebody that was, like, very theoretical, could talk to me about fucking space and aliens and stuff like that, because that's my was my in it, my initial idea. Apparently, like, ev- like, every physics professor at UTSA sucks dick, or, like, is, like, ter- like not very charismatic, right? Which you would expect from physics professors, right? Yeah. But the highest rated professor period at UTSA, she's this woman, she teaches sociology, some kind of like mid-range sociology. She's a published author. I can't think of her name right now, but I was like, man, like it would be nothing for me to show up at this chick's office during office hours and be like, hey, I have like this startup podcast, like, please come on. You know what I mean? Yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. If you want to do it over Skype, you want to do it in person. Like right, whatever. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, or if you want, we could go to her. I can bring my setup. Right. We could go to her. Just I fucking have, do yeah, it in I, class. Yeah, I I can have my, uh, you know, my to-go setup. Yeah. Know? Yeah, so I so I thought about that. So, like, I mean, that that's some of the ideas. I've spoken to a local comic who agreed that he'd come on. He already does like a couple of his own pod friends podcasts, but I think uh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I think I showed you his profile. Yeah. But, so, uh, Davy Jacks is his name. Yeah. So I want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to bring Davy Jacks on. I haven't, I haven't followed up with him yet just cause I want to up- update a couple of mics in the studio first. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man. Um, so have you thought about any, uh, any, uh, bringing anybody on in the new season? Um, you know, I wanted to try to bring somebody in that I know through the VHS thing. Community. Um, mm-hmm. uh, there's a couple people. One of them is pissed off at me, so that's not going to happen. Dude, Him it's going to make actually... it a better episode. Well, he doesn't talk to me, so. <laughs> I, yeah, I fucking, I got, I got a bunch of orders wrong once upon a time sending VHS. And I, I corrected almost all of them, but his, I... I thought I had given him everything he wanted, and then apparently I didn't, even though I wrote it down, because I write the shit on the box. So I was like, okay, so I gave him a lot more in a bunch of my rare stuff to make up for it, just to kind of like, all right, calm him down. Still pissed off, still mad, so I'm just like, all right, fuck it. Somebody fucks... I wanted to get this guy who fucked me. He fucked me bad, dude. I gave him... All my Pee Wee's Playhouse toys, all of them. Every single action figure, even the ones knew. you had behind you in the last time we podcasted, they're gone, bro. The only the only ones that I have are the dolls from when I was a kid, and then I got the big, uh, the what is what is uh, like it's like a puppet uh, thing. But anyways, I had all these toys, and he was supposed to give me like all these stacks of um, VHS tapes, all these Canon rare ones, and. He doesn't even respond to me anymore. Like, he sees my messages, but he doesn't respond. And he keeps giving me the same bullshit, like, oh, I went through a breakup. Oh, I'm depressed. And Just I under- to and keep I was- your shit? Just to keep your shit? Or- and I'm just, and I, I just tell him, like, hey, man, just send the toys back. Or just send me the money that you think they're worth. Because I know exactly what all of them are worth. Right. And he just, he just keeps throwing me bullshit. So I'm just here. like, I wanted to get him on the podcast, but he doesn't talk. But... A lot of the time, scumbags are really, like, charismatic, though. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, dude, like, this guy would be a good uh, a good guest. Too bad he's a lying piece of shit or, you know, too bad yeah. he, like, doesn't pay like, his child support or something. Like, I, I, I was late sending him a package because I thought I had sent it because I had so many things going out. We were doing trades. He, I traded him, like, a Nintendo 64, some... Pokemon cards, old ones, and just a few things like that. I thought I'd send it to him, but I didn't. And I was like, oh, shit. And this dude fucking Instagram chatted me, like face chatted me, was like all pissed off. I was like, bro, it's only been two weeks. Like, I'll send it to you. And so I sent it to him, and it got sent back, and he was all pissed off. And I was like, all right, just pay for it to, because just pay for it to go back to you, and I'll just send you the money. So he sent me the receipt. I sent him the cash. And then he sent me the tape. So 
it was like already an ordeal whatever but you know he got his shit i paid for it you know he didn't have to dig in his pocket too deep and he gave me a bunch of tapes which didn't sell nobody wanted them which is fine i what, kept what tapes myself. what what tapes were there there's just shit that i already had there was the ones that did sell was he gave me like parody old parody porn tapes those sold like uh I think it was uh edward penis hands and those you know those type of movies nobody wanted edward penis hands no i said those were the only ones oh. that sold oh yeah. <laughs> of course yeah. yeah those were the only ones that sold but the other ones some of them i kept and some of them were just on there so long and nobody was itching for them so i was just like fuck it i'll just take them off so but now they, i'm kind of but, but they were itching for edward penis hands <laughs> they wanted the edward penis hands mm-hmm. the dildo hands yeah but it, yeah, it was it I'm kind of like I'm over it now. It sucks because I lost a lot of toys, but I was able to keep I was able to keep the one that I wanted for a long time. That's why I was like, well, at least I have these few and all the action figures are gone, but they've gone up since like in price since then cuz I check just like god damn it. It's hit that. Good. Hit that. Hit that. <laughs> Let's pretend like we're dabbing it up, dude. I got a I got a rig like yours, the bigger one. It's charging right now because I just have the high salt ones. Not this, exactly like that, but yeah, it's like one of those. This is a gift from my best friend in the whole world. Shout out. You know who you are, homie. I've seen your dick before. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> is his dick bigger than that thing? Uh, about the same size. <laughs> Good for you. No, and his, thing... not mine. Oh, I wasn't talking about yours. Oh, uh, okay. We're not that close, bro. <laughs> Funny. Uh, you remember Adam? Oh, we did the podcast with him, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, funny enough, we were talking about his dick size the other day. Like, oh. <laughs> Over an Instagram text message, I was like, bro, like friends don't let friends like self hate on their own penis size. I was like, You're a fucking you're a fucking monster. Don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise. <laughs> and he hearted it and he was like, Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Like I don't know. I don't know. Mine's mine's all right, I guess. I uh I have a child from it, so that's cool. I didn't have the child, my wife did, but I helped a little bit. From the penis. From my pina, penis, penis. How, did, wouldn't it be cooler if you pluralized penis like by adding an I instead of like pina? <laughs> there's so yeah, much. Have, there's so much pina in this room. <laughs> 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 oh, That's shit. the new pluralization, dude. We're fucking changing it. I'm, 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 I'm writing fucking Webster's Miriam tomorrow. Dude, just create a fucking Wikipedia right now. Peni, peni. <laughs> so, what P- you been up to, man? What you been listening to? What you been, what you been listening to, podcast wise, yeah, music wise? Yeah. So, I told you about Flagrant, but so, like, let me tell you about this fucking podcast I heard about the other day. Well, well like, I, I was like looking. So, like, I'm obsessed with the desert. I'm obsessed with Marfa, Texas, Albuquerque, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Arizona, uh, Las Cruces, like everything desert. Like, I don't know, like something about the isolation and the extreme environment. Like, it's always called to me when we drove through the desert on our way to Vegas, like when I was like 16, like we saw the painted desert. We saw all that. Right. We took like two weeks to drive through the Southwest. And I and I loved it. Right. And by the time we got to Vegas, obviously as a 16 year old, I wasn't having it, but everything up until that point was great. And so like, and in recent years, I'm like, man, I, I would love to live in Marfa, Texas. Right. And have you been to Marfa, Texas? Uh, I've driven like real close, but no, no. Like I've, I've spent, I spent like a week in El Paso there, maybe like a year ago or a couple years ago. I, I, I worked there like 2009, 2010. For how long? Uh, it was like two, it was like a week and then another week and a half or something. We, we stayed in Alpine right outside of Marfa because there wasn't anything in Marfa. Yeah. 
Well, it's it blown. Was... It's blown up over like the last couple oh, yeah, of years. No. Yeah, yeah, the last couple of years because whenever I went, there wasn't that Prada shit out there. All that stuff wasn't out there yet. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure about. I'm trying to get like the Instagram this... live. Yeah, yeah, I'm on live. There we go. Anyway, hey, yeah. Marfa's nice, dude. I haven't. I I wasn't able to go see the Marfa lights or any of that stuff, but it seems cool. Yeah, man, I'd love to live like out there. Like land is cheap. It's like eight thousand dollars for like twenty or forty acres, depending on where you get it. Really? Yeah, you could get like a small ranch for like a for like a tiny fortune. But so like I, like I, I fantasize, in other words, about the desert a lot. And so I started looking for podcasts associated with the desert, right? And there was one that was fictional. It was like a fictional like NPR station uh years back called welcome to night vale there was a there was a, a story called uh alice isn't dead that dealt with this truck driver that was driving through like america oh that sounds familiar yeah yeah real good podcast like fictional right <clears throat> so i was looking for something similar and i see this like thing called the desert oracle and i was like so what's this all about right so i i look at it and it's basically Welcome to Night Vale, which is like a fake radio show, like talking about this creepy town in the middle of the desert, right? But but it's real, and this guy like it like it sounds just like like a fictional podcast, like a like a production, like a story, but he's actually interviewing people like Jeremy Corbell and like, you know, people associated with all, all that stuff. Right. So it's like, there's, there's a bit of theater associated with it, but he's talking about like legit shit, like fucking bases in the middle of the desert that nobody knows about. Uh, Marfa lights. So I was like, wow, this is really. And so like, you, it's kind of, it's kind of one of those podcasts where you have to be like at home in your bedroom alone with like a fucking candle lit you know, window open on a cool, breezy night kind of thing. So, like, I was like, this is cool, but, like, it's not something that maybe would be, uh, like, you'd be able to focus on if you were, like, at work doing something intense. Or driving or, or something like that. No, actually, <laughs> like, driving, you know, as long as you can get in that place where you're like, I was listening to this thing and I didn't know how I got there, you know what I mean? <laughs> or I drove the whole way and I don't remember driving there. So, yeah. A lot of times, a lot of times at work, if I have a podcast, I, I can't do music as much as I used to, but when I were, whenever I was working, I would have a podcast on that I didn't care about, mm -hmm. just kind of background noise. Mm -hmm. And I would every once in a while, like catch a little bit of it. But for the most part, it's just kind of like, eh, just, you know, a little ambience. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah. All right. Marfa. Sorry. I remember Marfa was chill. We went. We were there like around, I think February or January, and then April, because I remember we drove back on uh, Easter Sunday in like 2009 or 10. That was like our last trip out there, which would be was... almost exactly 10 years ago now, or 11. Yeah, it was 2009 yeah. Easter Sunday. You're coming right up on Lint. Lint's Lint's going on right now, right? Oh, dude, I'm a terrible Catholic. I don't know. Oh, I, I'm not a Catholic. I just haven't seen any. I didn't see anybody with the Ash Wednesday crosses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we missed Ash Wednesday. Me, like, me and me and my dad, like, I'm like, I, I was raised Catholic, but I'm like a cafeteria Catholic now. And my daughter's not really being raised Catholic, but I'll still take her to go get her ashes and shit like that. Like, because she likes it. She thinks, like, the church is cool. And she's like, this church is cool. And I'm like, that's exactly why I like Catholicism, right? So, so I would always take her to go get ashes, right? Just to give her a little piece of, you know, the religion I grew up in. But we forgot this here. Is she, are y'all, so y'all aren't raising her with any type of religion? Um, I wouldn't say that. My, my, my wife's just taking the reins on that, I guess. Okay. Um, like she takes her to church on Sunday, but they go to a non-denominational church. Oh, like a Christian church. Right. She does the, 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 the non-denominational protestant thing and takes her to church every sunday i do the catholic thing and take her to church once a year <laughs> or like uh christmas or you know yeah whatever. yeah Mid midnight mass easter sunday and ash wednesday yeah yeah i think i think our son will get that from his grandparents yeah the religion stuff i think it makes Not it that... special though like it's like this is a 
I don't know. Some people like criticize like, oh, you're just a cafeteria Catholic. It's like, no, nah, man. Like, it's like a, you know, like you're, you're kind of remembering your some some of your roots. You know what I mean? It's a special yeah. occasion. Like you don't denounce that you're you weren't Catholic, but you're not. You know, like what's his name? John Leguizamo calls himself a. Uh, um, what is that called? A recovering Catholic. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, dude. Like, honestly, you don't need to go to church. I, I don't think you need to go to church every Sunday to be religious. I can literally go over to my home altar, remove the statue of Beelzebub, put a cross there, and start to Jesus. pray. <laughs> and it's as good as if I went to church. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the church. A church isn't like a building. It's the people that are a part of it right yeah let's get gnostic about it yeah no it's it's true though i think that's in the bible because jesus he didn't preach that's in that that's in the gospel of thomas which is a non-canonical uh gospel my uh, friend i don't even know what that is i was just i just remember that's from stigmata bro (laughs) oh shit i haven't seen that movie in forever who the fuck's in that that's uh that guy, <laughs> that guy is it's the not priest. Arnold. Arnold. Arnold was in End Days. Arnold Schwarzenegger was in End Days. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was a good but, movie. I liked, I liked Stigmata. That but was it's a, a good little, movie. But it was a little. It was like it was like uh, Exorcist mixed with like teenage bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, like uh, I don't know. When it comes to religion and stuff, like I don't want to be a, a hypocrite and try to raise our son. Justin on my motherfucking live. What's up, biatch? Hey, what's up? <laughs> he'll, he, he'll hear this later. But he better listen. I listen to yours, bro. I'm not sure what you're talking about. He's giving me that you. love. He's giving me those Corazonis right now. Like, hold on. I don't know if you can see it. Hold on. <laughs> you see it? Well, where is he? Where? Oh, his, uh, it's, it's blurry. But yeah, okay. I see it now. Yeah. He said, "My mo- he said my motherfuckery, <laughs> bro. I'm on with your primo, our primo. My motherfuckery. Keep on hitting it. Keep on hitting it. Come on, hit oh, it. He's trying to join. He's trying to join your live. No, maybe. Oh, maybe I should. Let me see. Let me pick on he, this motherfucker. He has to. He has to join. I think. Go to live with Jay Benna. There you go." Hit this. Let's see. Let's see if he adds it. Come on, brother. I want to put you on squawk out. Impromptu. Slash. On call. I don't know. It's not on call with your homegirl. It is, but it ain't. He... He's not joining, is he? Is he at work? You know what? Like he's uh he's he's uh he's being uh uh secretive. He's got he's got to maintain like a respectable public image because of his current pursuits. What are his current pursuits? Oh, oh, here he comes. Here hey. He comes. I can't hear him. All I see is your garage ceiling, bro. I know it's a garage ceiling because the painting is gone. Oh, see, Benna joined. What's up? I see his little forehead. <laughs> his little forehead. I can't hear you. Oh, there he is. Hold up, hold, hold up, bro. Check this out. Check this out. Hold on. Look. Can you see it? What's up, baby? What's up? Put your hey! <laughs> Where are you I, hiding at, baby? I'll hit you up later, bro. All right, bye. Anyway, what I'm. Are his, what are his pursuits? Um. Uh, I'm not sure if he would want me to say it right here. I'll hit him up. Yeah, it's uh. It's just, uh, I think, uh, like a, a job uh, that he's he's going for, and he, he probably doesn't want to. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Did he put it out into the universe yet or not? Well, I mean, I think he's pretty close, uh, but uh, I don't know if he, if he got accepted or not. I haven't talked to him in probably 
I don't know. We, we, we talked maybe three weeks ago about having a, an episode uh, where we were going to interview. It was like related to like the crypto trading thing. I'm still lost with all that stuff. Eh, it's money. It's money. Um, and, and, and in its purest form, it's more comparable to cash than anything else. Like you can think of it that way. You can you can touch it. It's real. Um, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can show you cash right now, dog. <laughs> if if solid money could be made digital, right? Well, actually, no. That's a lie. You can't touch it the way you can touch a coin or cash. You could. It would involve printing the code on a sheet of paper. Oh shit! Right. But the code is essentially unbreakable because of the system that it works on. The system that it works on has like the strongest cryptography the earth has ever known. So yeah, like it would take like a like hundred quantum computers from like the year 2150 to crack. Like, you know what I mean? Like you would, you would need yeah. some kind of ridiculous computation power like to hack it. It's basically mathematically impossible and so oh, so you could print it on a sheet of paper or several sheets of paper or you could put it on a usb drive or you could transfer it send it in an email not that you would want to i could put like a qr code of the bitcoin on this screen and somebody could whoever screen grabs it first like could end up with that money oh shit um it's a little i can i i understand why people have a hard time like understand like understanding what it is um but i mean you don't need to understand like the nuts and bolts of how email works you don't have to understand about like tcp packets and like you know ip addresses and um you know binary turning into text and you don't have to know any of that shit like all you have yeah. to know is that like email works in 99% of the time or maybe 90% of the time it's secure. You know what I mean? And, and, and so you don't really need to know the technicals behind, like people have faith in email. People have faith in a bank card. People have faith uh, that the bank isn't gonna, you know, close up shop and keep your money. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the thing is, because Bitcoin is so new, people don't have that kind of faith in it. But it's essentially as strong, if not stronger, than all those other systems. So with time, people will gain the faith that they need to know. But what's happening right now with the, with the Bitcoin thing is like a lot like what happened with cash and banks. You know, banks are essentially uh, setting up services to make the transfer more convenient so so yeah. they're so it's basically turning into you could still take a debit card and go to the store and pay for like a t-shirt you know at h m with bitcoin using a bank card but you're not using cash you're using a bank card and the bank is the one that is managing the bitcoin just like your bank is the one that's managing the cash you know well, what i mean places that are accepting it now right a lot of places yeah but i don't think that's the way it's it's gonna go right like no? yeah like i mean just like cash is going away it's not gonna go away it'll always be a concept it'll always be uh, a digital agreement transferred between financial institutions but your bank card is going to be the tool you use right so yeah so i don't necessarily think that bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are um going to be universally accepted it's still going to be some kind of like digital tool that you use but the banks and the financial institutions are going to provide like a service to make that complicated system just a little more convenient just you liquidate know? it make it into money yeah it's going to be I, I mean it is money but like it's like instead of the bitcoin moving it'll be i mean instead of the cash moving behind your bank card it'll be bitcoin that's wh that's where i think it's going to go you know what I mean? Shit. Or to complicate matters a little bit, um, <laughs> you know, it'll be the bank card moving the Bitcoin, which is essentially going to be moving across markets as cash or okay. the bank card moving the cash, which is moving the Bitcoin behind it. You know, it's all going to yeah. be like a like a chain. You know what I mean? And there's going to be computer systems that are going to 
do all that thinking for you. In other words, like, you know, I have uh, $57,400 in my bank account, which is equivalent to about a Bitcoin right now. You know what I mean? But I'm going to use my bank card. And regardless of whether the bank is saying he moved, you know, $57,000 or one Bitcoin, it's still going to be the same thing in the background. They're going to see it as the same thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. I mean, we'll see. But Man, you like, got a lot of money on your bank account, dog. Nah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. I like I liquidate. Honestly, like I liquidated. Like we have this tool where when we analyze, when we te- there's two kinds of analysis when you analyze cryptocurrency or any kind of financial vehicle. It's fundamental analysis. That's like okay, let me look at this company, what it's worth. You know, kind of like what Warren Buffett does. He goes in, he analyzes a company, and he decides whether it's worth investing or not. And then there's technical analysis, and that's like, well, let me look at the price of the stock over the last 10 years and try to find a pattern, you know what I mean, that makes sense. And it gets a lot more complicated than that, but it's basically charts, right? So you look at the charts, right? And uh, there's a tool on the charts that we use called Fibonacci. And it's it's far out there. I think I've talked to you about it. I've talked I've talked about it on on Squawk Out before. It's kind of a far out idea, but it has to do with like the way the universe is built, built and patterns that repeat in the universe, like real kind of like hazy mustard sh- far out shit, right? And the and 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 the and the idea is that you can find the same patterns in financial markets that you find in uh rabbits reproducing the the pattern that rabbits use to reproduce or the way a flower grows or the way the curve of an ocean wave crashes onto you know it's or the the arms of the galaxies you know there's all this pattern right all throughout the universe and so so basically back when uh bitcoin was approaching twenty thousand, right it was approaching its all-time high i looked at the chart according to these Fibonacci numbers. And I say, it's going to go up and it'll go up really quickly after 20,000, but it's going to crash. And that's kind of what we're seeing now. We're seeing some turbulence in its price. It was going up really fast, right? And everybody was like hitting me up on DMs because they know I'm into this. And they were like, I want to get on on Bitcoin. And I'm like, don't get it on Bitcoin. Like, do not buy Bitcoin. It's about to crash. And that's kind of what's going down right now. Yeah, so, I think my boss, my my former bosses, they were talking about it one day a lot, and I was like, oh, they're like, do you know anything about this? I was like, no, my, a couple of my cousins know a lot about that, but I was, they're like, do you have any money in this? I was like, no, nah, I don't. <laughs> I was like, no. I mean, I don't you know. don't need a lot. You could you could buy five dollars worth of Bitcoin. It would be a fraction of a Bitcoin, but you could you know buy as much as you want. Well, I just I'm I I'm not educated enough in that stuff to. I guess not paying any mind to it, but you're not into it. Yeah. And and not that I'm against it or anything like that. I just don't know enough about it to, to it's dry, dude. Let's fucking be honest. It's dry shit. You know what I mean? Like, unless you have like, just like with anything, you know, you might get into the fucking Smiths one day and you were never into the Smiths. It's like, Smiths are pretty good. Yeah, they are good. Right. But it's like you had that day. If somebody approached you before you knew about the Smiths and they were acting like a fucking lunatic and you're like, they were like, you got to fucking hear this band. And you're like, hey, I'll give it a listen. Just like any band. Somebody fucking DMs you a a band. You're like, I'll check it out when I have some time. Right. You don't instantly get obsessed over it. Or maybe you hear one song and you were like, that was all right. But then one day, you know, the conditions and the stars align and you hear that one song on that perfect day with that person there and it's like oh my god i love this song and you start what listening song? to yeah no what smith songs what smith song comes to mind the well uh the one that everybody listens to it's like this charming man man I, asleep comes to mind for me how does that one go it's the same i think it's like the same chorus just repeated it's like this sing me to sleep man. no it's <laughs> well, it's like a real, it's Fucking like a real boy. somber, slow song. It's just like, sing me to sleep, sing me to sleep. I'm tired and I, I want to go to bed. It's kind of like that. There's I, a few I, more lines, but it's pretty much the same shit over and over again. 
Fucking when I'm editing this, I'll check it out. I'll listen to it. Yeah, because I mean, M Morrissey and the Smiths is okay, honestly. But like for me, it's one of those bands where it's like there's four or five songs that I like, you know, that I'll throw in my mix. Yeah. That's that's uh, I, I haven't listened to the Smiths or the Cure. I've listened to the Cure. I, I think the Cure to me is better than the Smiths. A little bit, yeah. Because the Smiths are like the misfits in the way that their first three albums were the same albums, just the same songs, but they would rotate another song in, you know, it's kind of like early misfits, early Smiths. And then the Smiths broke up pretty quick and Morrissey started his own shit, which I don't know. It was okay, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I saw him live in Austin years ago. Really? How was that? Yeah, was, Do you remember the show? It was dope. Yeah. He put a good show on, man. It was, uh. No, no, no. I saw The Cure in Austin. I saw The Smiths at the Majestic Theater, actually. And not The Smiths, uh, Morrissey. It was good, man. Like, Yeah, The Majestic is a good place, I think, to see yeah. a, a band like that. We saw, and The Aztec, too, right? Like, The, Az oh. the Aztec, I think, it's a, a little bit smaller, isn't it, than The Majestic? I think so, but I like The Majestic because it's almost like a theater. It's like a, th it, it, it is a theater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? Like, um, have you ever have you ever been to the symphony? Speaking of the majestic, because that's when where I was, they play. When I was in when I was in middle school, yeah, or no, uh, sixth six or seventh grade, I, I went. Yeah, you went to that field trip. The, yeah, the it was symphony a field trip. trip. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I went to that field trip, and then I thought I was like being like fucking Mister Romantic when I took, and I was. I guess it was like a fucking badass move on my part when, like, I think me and my wife were newlyweds. We might have been married like. A year or two and i yeah, you know, i was like let's get fucking dressed up and let's go see the symphony like on you know a formal night and like i yeah. did i planned it out like a year ahead right i was like i i like mozart beethoven and bach like i like the big three right yeah and uh and so this night you know because most of the time that like the symphony is doing like show tunes and different stuff right they don't always do straight classical but this night they were playing mozart and dvorak right and i had never heard of dvorak up until that point and so i was like let's get dressed up she had an evening gown i got into like a like a nice suit people in there were like in suits nice suits and tuxes we went uh everybody packed it dude it was super nice right it wasn't like the middle school trip it was like legit right yeah. and so we went in Fucking Mozart was awesome, but then I was introduced to Dvorak, and I was like, "This is fucking badass, dude!" Because Dvorak is like dark, right? It's like I've heard Dvorak before, yeah. Like if you're like if you're making like metal comparisons, like Mozart might be like, uh, like a happy Metallica song, right? Yeah. But Dvorak is like Slayer. Like on a bad day, like on a yeah. a slow evil Slayer song, right? Like almost, like almost like a Cannibal Corpse. Yeah, bit. something kind like of pissing rugged. cum or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, yeah, I'm that's have to, man. I, I like classical music. I haven't listened to it in a long time, but I I fuck with it. My wife has a station saved on her. It's eighty eight point three, I think. It's just a classical station. Every once in a while, I'll throw that on when I'm tired of fucking podcasts or what's on the radio. Yeah. Supposedly, there's a vineyard somewhere in California, or maybe it was Italy, and they found out that playing Mozart like helped like the vines grow, like it like increased their yield by like twenty percent. Really? And, yeah. And so they were like pumping Mozart out in the vineyards twenty four hours a day, right? And so Bose heard about this you can look this up bose heard about it and they like donated like a fuckload of speakers and so now like all throughout this vineyard like is covered like is like covered with these badass like bose waterproof speakers and they're Damn. just fucking getting mozart all day long and there's like there dude there's like a like some uh it was called the secret life of plants it was like a documentary back in the 70s and the whole and the, and the guy that was like narrating the documentary was actually like a former CIA agent. Oh shit! That that like did this research about like vibrations of music with plants and stuff like that. So that's Damn. I mean well, I'm going off on tangents. Fucking ADD, no, you're but. fine, dude. Man, we gotta we gotta wrap up here in a minute, but right on, man. We sh 
I want to get a, I want to try to get like definitely a, a, I, I'm not very book smart or anything like that, but we should definitely get like some kind of professor, a psychic. And I want to talk to like a proud boy, like a super, super duper right wing. Oh, God. I do, man. That's edgy that's as gonna have, fuck, that's, dude. That's going to have to be Skyped because I can't do it in person. Uh, but I just want to, dude, I want to hear it. But you know what, though? <laughs> like, what's like, I mean, and, and I, I mean this, like whenever you talk to any extremist, right? Like, w- regardless of whether it be, and I'm, I'm saying this as a former communist, right? Like card carrying yes. socialist party communist, right? Yeah. Who's kind of realized that there is a certain futility uh, and, and pointlessness to that. Like, unless you're going to get a gun and you have a fucking battalion behind you, right? And I'm not advocating violence, but you know what I mean? Like, unless it's like a majority mob thing. Like, you're not going to accomplish much with extremism. And yeah. I think the people on either extreme, whether it be left or right, haven't thought it out <laughs> entirely, right? No. They, they haven't gotten to that point, right? I was there, right? And I don't mean to say it from, like, a hoity-toity kind of like, oh, I was in third grade, you'll catch up, you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah, it's like, it's just, it's just an opinion. It's just a personal opinion like i don't think we would get a lot out of that it would kind of like be like interviewing um i don't want to say somebody that's beneath you but i just don't think you would get a lot out. it would you'd work yourself up it would be entertaining oh, no. it would be entertaining I, dude but... i talked to i talked to a lot of right-wing people at the vape stores mm-hmm. i kind of play i play stupid a lot because like I went into this vape shop and I was wearing a mask and they were like, oh, you don't have to wear that shit in here. And I was just like, oh, no, I was like, I prefer to wear it. And they started going on and on about Trump 2024 and all this shit. And I was just like, I was like, man, that'd be something. They're like, did you vote for him? And I was just like, oh, no, I don't vote. Like, <laughs> I just kind of took that route. I was like, yeah, I want you to give me a discount on this uh, on this e-cigarette. So I'm going to just say nothing. <laughs> but, I, you know, I just think. At the end of the day, everybody has their own beliefs, you know, be it political, religious, whatever. But I mean, if you've been raised and always voted Republican, why wouldn't you have voted for Trump? Honestly, why wouldn't you have? Right, right. I mean, Democrats, they vote for Bill Clinton, you know, all the people, John Kerry, when he was running. I remember, I think that was the first time I voted was for John Kerry against Bush. I think it's like generational politics or something like that. The idea that you're going to vote the way your parents did and so on and so forth. Yeah, I I don't vote the way my parents do or the way my dad does. I don't know how my mom votes, but, Mm -hmm. you know, I. But but did you do that? But did you do that to rebel or did you go through like a thought process where it was like, no, "No, this is just not me. Before I was 18, I, I thought I was I fancied myself a conservative, like a Republican. And then when I turned 18, I couldn't vote till I was 19 because that's when the election was, I think. And I just remember I was just I was doing a lot of research, a lot of research on it and reading up. And I just I came to my own conclusion. Good. And I didn't say anything to my dad for a long time about it. But of course, when you get in your 20, your early 20s, you start wanting to pick a fight with everybody who has different beliefs. But then you start looking around and you're in Texas I was behind you. That was my 30s. I was like, yeah, I was, I was, I, I was thinking some of other things in my 20s. <laughs> yeah, no, like I, I was like deep, deep into you used to be angry, and, right? Pretty angry, right? In oh, your 20s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I used to pick a fight with anybody, not like physical fight, but I would get into an argument with anybody who had like a different um, political belief than me. And I would like try to. And then at the end of the day, I started like this is pointless. It's all pointless to. <laughs> even discuss it because at the end of the day nobody's going to change anybody's mind like you're already going to do what you're going to do behind the voting booth so it's you know especially in texas dude it's fucking (sighs) i don't know man texas is changing you know what's happening in austin is really weird right now man it's really weird like i mean obviously Austin is like the closest thing to communist Russia that you're going to get in Texas, which is, (laughs) which is ironic because it's like the bluest city in the, in the reddest state. 
but yeah. uh, or one of the bluest cities in the red estate. But I think San Antonio is a little bit more blue. I think it uh, seems like it. I well, think the way the districts are drawn fucks San Antonio. It would that would be true if like but San Antonio is so big. They have so many different cities. They're suburbs, but they call themselves cities within it. But you know, we got a lot of Malinches here too. You yeah. know, we we got a lot of like uh uh light skinned Mexicans who think that um well I gotta be careful here, but you know what I mean. It's like uh yeah like a lot of turncoats. Yeah. People people forgetting who they are and where they come from. And you know, if if you wanna be a conservative person, I mean, I don't consider myself my politics first. I consider myself a husband and a father first before anything. Yeah, yeah. And I ch- I try to put that in Fuck my family. My... I'm a podcaster before anything right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just it's kidding. Just I'm just, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like I try to do that when I vote and I'm like, well, as a father yeah. and a husband, I-, I can't bring myself to vote for somebody like Trump, whatever political party he is. And if there was a female running to be a president that was a Republican and had the same viewpoints as him, I wouldn't vote for her either. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter the gender, the the race, anything. It doesn't matter if I don't if I, my beliefs don't align with them, then I'm not going to vote for them. That's just and if it turns out both sides are the same, then I'm not going to vote at all. Like, oh, I mean, I might write somebody in, but I'm not going to, you know. You're not going to what? I'm not going to not vote, but I mean, I'll show up and, you know, maybe the Green Party or something. I've never voted for a third party, but I would if I had to, if I felt strongly enough against the people. But, you know, it seems yeah, like man. it's going to go that way pretty soon here. Well, I, I don't know. I like I, I ran. I ran as to be a JP on on a third party ticket. And that was uh, educational, but I never thought I was going to win and I didn't. You know, but it was uh, it was cool. You know, it was cool. we talked about it before. Yeah. But, I, I, did you did you ever meet Melissa Vara? It sounds familiar, but I can't think of anything off the top. It's um, one of uh, Ricardo's um, Ricardo's sister, Evita, was like one of her friends growing up. Uh uh-uh. She ran for something. It was on the Democratic ticket when Beto ran. Oh, OK. Recently. Um, yeah, yeah, I voted for her. I voted for her because I, you know, I voted I vote. Most of the time, almost every time I vote Democrat across the board. Mm. And that's like one of the the few elections where they ask you, like, are you voting Republican or Democrat? And all the people in front the prim- of me. The primary. Also, the pr- they do that yeah. in the primary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, this is also for like a local. local or run, local. runoff or something. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I just remember I was the only person that said Democrat. And the lady that she was like, oh, oh, sweetie. You're the only Democrat I've heard say that today. I was like, what? She was like, yeah, they know Democrats voted today. I was like, oh, man. Damn. I was like, that's fucking scary. Wait, wait, like, the, the the clerk, the, the voting clerk? Yeah, said she that? said that. And I was surprised because they're not supposed to. I, yeah, I they're not they're supposed, supposed to, I don't think they're supposed to say that she either. She was an older black lady. So I think she you know, was like, fuck. fuck it. Yeah. I like, yeah. I was just like, I guess in my head, I was like. This must be true because she shouldn't have said that or whatever. Because I was just like, yeah, I guess. I mean, like, why, but also, why? Well, like, like, did she expect you to change your mind? And be like, oh, I don't want to be the only one. <laughs> well, that's that's like go. That's like going to like I used to work at Taco Cabana. That's like everybody in the morning is like, oh, bean and cheese, bean and cheese, bean and cheese, bean and cheese, bean and cheese. Oh, can I get a barbacoa? Like, oh shit, wow, you're the only person who hasn't asked for this taco. Like everybody. Cause that's how it was sometimes. Like you just get like, oh shit! Like pump the brakes a little bit. Like okay, it's a little change. Yeah, man. All right. Well, I guess are, are we done? You want to get out of yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. All that's right. a good exit. Yeah. Yeah, thank, man. Thank uh, my taco, taco analogy. Yeah, dude. Tacos. Like who who does <laughs> who doesn't want to end the day on a fucking solid taco or ten? <laughs> All right, brother. All right, man. Uh, I'll uh, I'll hit you up. I'm probably gonna drop this one on Wednesday. Okay, yeah, I gotta work tomorrow night, so I'll probably around the same time. All right, brother. Peace. All right, man. We'll see you later. Cheers. Hang up for me if you would. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got you. All right, man. Later. All right, I'll hit you up. Bye.
All right, guys, thanks for listening to the Squawk Out podcast. We're going to be uh, making our way out. Uh, I don't really have anything uh, intelligent to say about crypto right now, but uh, we'll be seeing you guys uh, soon in the coming uh, weeks and months as we upgrade the studio. All right, cheers. Cheers.